Hello and welcome. So before we start our tour of the app launcher in Microsoft 365, we need to talk about groups. The group is the central component for all the tools that you'll find on the app launcher. A group can be a person or people, or a group can be a thing or an event. But whether you're creating a SharePoint site, a team, or using any of the tools on the 365 app launcher, you're gonna need a group. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create and manage groups, and we'll take a look at some of the tools that you get when you create a 365 group. So if you've got a few minutes, stick around and let me show you how to create and manage Microsoft 365 groups. When I say that the group is central to 365 tools, I mean that if you're currently using tools from the app launcher, then you're already part of a group. And that group is often your company or organization. One simple way to create and manage 365 groups is by using people or the contacts app from the launcher. When you open the contacts app, the group section is on the left panel. To create the new group, just click on the small arrow next to the new contact and select new group. You can name your group and maybe even give a brief description. Click edit and you will be able to make the group public or private, set a default language and set the subscription options for the group. After creating the group, you can add members by selecting email addresses, or you can skip this step and do it later. Select edit at the top of the screen to make changes to the group. Here you can even enable the option to allow people from outside of the organization to send email to the group. Shortly after creating the group and adding members, each member will be notified by email that they are now part of the group. After a couple of minutes or a quick screen refresh, you should see 365 tools that are now available for group use. Group members can access these tools from this screen or from the app launcher. Two important tools for group members will be the group email and group calendar. Members can access the group email by selecting the Outlook application from the app launcher and then navigating to the group mailbox further down the left panel. Each member can read, reply, and perform most normal email functions. Members can control the amount of group activity to view by selecting the three dots and then settings. Members can access the group calendar by opening the calendar app on the launcher and then selecting the group calendar on the left-hand panel. All group events are available and members can even interact with the event by double-clicking. Events added to the group calendar are available to all group members. The calendar can also be added as a web part on the group's SharePoint site. Each group comes with its own SharePoint site, where you can securely store all documents created, used, and shared by the group. You can even create custom pages that allow you to display and use group tools. You can access the group's SharePoint site by selecting SharePoint from the app launcher or from the general channel of a team that you've created from the group.
Speaking of Teams, you can easily create a Microsoft Team by starting with your group. Just select Join and Create a Team at the bottom left side of the Teams application. Then select Create Team. Select from a group or team from the options that are provided and then select Microsoft 365 Group. Select your team and click Create. The team is now created using all of the group membership properties that are provided for the team. You can even use the Microsoft team to manage the membership of your 365 group. By adding, subtracting, or even changing the status of members. So that's a quick look at creating and managing Microsoft 365 groups. Whether your team size is 1 or 100, 365 groups provide a collaborative way of using all of the tools available on your organization's app launcher. I'll be back to talk a little more about some of these 365 tools, but in the meantime, thanks for joining me, and I'm Wayne.